breaking it up here. I like the sounds. Um, the Florida Panthers are on the verge of the most epic collapse in the history of the Stanley Cup Finals and in the, the history of just, you know, major sports in general. One of the, the great collapses that you will see. One, the, the one thing that has been missing from Florida's game in the last three games that needs to be there tonight is that urgency. They have absolutely, through three games, and this is not to take one thing away from what Edmonton has done, but they have looked like they knew this safety net was there, that there was a, like, yeah, we know, game seven. It's coming. We got it. It'll be all right. Um, we, we, we don't have to win this game. We can win the next one. Oh, we, we wanted to win it at home. Oh, you know what? We, we just didn't have the same urgency as them. Well, now that goes out the window. They have looked so bad in the last three games. And even that last one, I get Barkov was trying to do the no look pass, uh, the, the no look shot, uh, thing. That still, when he had that many two on one, that did not look like a confident shot. That looked like a, I'm going to put it on net and hope someone else can put the puck in. Um, th this team has been getting beaten in every sense of the word. And they just have not met this moment in any way, shape, or form over the last three games. Tonight, that is a difficult switch to flip when that other team has this gigantic ball of momentum rolling downhill. We will see if Florida can flip that switch and and get this thing rolling tonight. And the the uh the, the other thing that is concerning about that is they have been getting outworked. W E R K worked in these th last 3 games. I had said coming in that the dangerous thing about Florida is they can play any style with you and still feel comfortable with that. They cannot outskill Edmonton in this game. They need to make this one an ugly, down and dirty, grinded out type of a game. They can't let Edmonton start to freewheel a little bit. And even then, like we've seen Edmonton winning those battles, they can do it. But for Florida, you are not good enough to just strictly out talent this team. It needs to, you, you, a lot of talent on Florida. Don't hear what I'm not saying. There is a lot of talent on this Florida Panthers team. But they cannot afford to be outworked the way that they have. Because Edmonton does have the skill edge. You have to have the board wins edge, I guess. Um, and those sorts of things, right? Like, you need to win the Pucks in Deep Award in this game tonight. And be able to get that forecheck going. Create those opportunities. Like we saw in the early games where you force a really bad Darnell Nurse turnover. You force a really bad Stuart Skinner turnover. Um, you, you force a real bad Cody CC turnover. And an Evan Bouchard pass right onto your tape. That relentless forecheck, that relentless pressure needs to be back for Florida in this game. Because it has been nowhere to be found the last three games. You watch games one, two, and three. And then four, five, and six. And it looks like a completely different Florida Panthers team. They have have to know that that this is an all out everything left on the table um give us everything you got sort of a game with the effort that is going to be required for them tonight and after all of that it still might not be enough if Sergei Bobrovsky isn't one of the two best players on the ice tonight he cannot be the second best goalie in this game if he does the Edmonton Oilers complete the greatest comeback in the history of the NHL um that's just that's the way it works. Bobrovsky needs to get back to that level that he was at in those first three games where he was remarkable. And like you think of that save on McLeod after Edmonton had come back to make it a one goal game. Uh, McDavid circling around and instead of going all the way, cuts it short and passes it short side. McLeod gets the chance. Bobrovsky makes the save. That felt like the cup. Like, that felt like they won the Stanley Cup in that moment. And as it turns out, it's the last good moment Florida's had in the last four games. They need that guy to show up tonight or they're simply not winning this hockey game. Uh, another thing, not that like, I, I'm not putting the blame on, on anyone and I, I'm, I'm going out of my way to not talk too much big picture because we're going to have a lot of time this week to talk about that. Although not a ton because the schedule fucking sucks. With the, like the draft is this week. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but Ekblad and Forsling need to be that dominant pairing that they were in the first few games where Ekblad, I, I thought he had like some of the best hockey of his career in a, a couple of the games in this series. Um, and Forsling was dynamic and everything. And now they are just making the wrong decision at the wrong time pretty consistently. So for Florida, those guys need to get back to being the best defenseman on the ice um, and some of the best players on the ice. Like they, they even won the McDavid minutes in a couple of those games early on. I'm not saying do that because I, I do not believe that is possible. But lose it in a way that it's easier for everyone else to catch up after because that has not been happening in the the last three games i 
again, I wonder what this looks like, win or lose, tonight. Um, from a Florida standpoint, if they blow this, there is, like, it's it's history, and not the kind of history you want to make. Um, and from a legacy standpoint, again, like, I don't know who wears this, or what you have to do after it, or how you come back from that sort of a thing, but man alive, if they lose it tonight, I, I just, I don't know what those conversations are going to be like.